Yeah. Him with uh, <laughs> two yeah. tenths of a second, yeah. <laughs> 32.4. We're just right. watching the level five motorsports car with Christoph Bushu on board. Um, this car has had its, its ups and downs in this race, but it's actually definitely holding its own. It's currently moved up to third place in LMP2. They've they've been one to capitalize on the accident with Erika. So it's interesting that uh, Peugeot has responded. There, they, you know, they they may be thinking that 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 was a factor. Let's Let's talk about the battle in the GTE class a little bit now. We've got this amazing manufacturer's battle going on. It's Corvette, Ferrari, Corvette, Porsche, BMW, BMW, Porsche at the moment. Um, now, unfortunately, BMW's not had the best run so far, but they have just done the quickest lap time for their car in the 55 car. That's uh, Dirk Werner on board. Um, so, I mean, they are a couple laps down, but we'll just have to wait and see how, how things pan out there. I think everyone in that class is going to have to keep... Now that, again, that's a driver not intimately familiar in the dark with, with the interior of the car, trying to adjust something, and he's accidentally hit the wiper switch by mistake. So maybe a map, maybe a fuel map. Do a real, a real sort of family team that goes out to have a good time and enjoy the racing. And they always say, we're just here to have a good time, but in having a good time, they're very, very fast, <laughs> I have to say. And, uh, you know, I enjoyed a, a Le Mans finish here with Clint Field and Duncan Dayton in 2006. And that was the same year that we won Sebring and were second overall. Yeah. So it was a it was a great year and, and we had a really good time in that car. Well, we look forward to seeing you back in the uh, prototype side. Seventh place. Yes, he is. Car number 10, Nico Lapierre in seventh place. Long way behind the front running diesels, long way in front of the petrols behind him. So he's 40 seconds behind the diesel in front and a minute in front of the petrol. What all three of them have, of course, is V8 engines. Yes. So they're very yeah. powered. But Farfus, who started from pole, just lost that pole in the opening laps. I guess he was just hanging back a little bit, just to make sure yeah. he didn't get any trouble. And, and now he's going he's to gradually clawing it back. And now. I think it's 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 very tempting for as a driver early on in this race to want to make you know the real pass to, pa to to get past the Corvette. But I think he's being smart there by not overcooking the brakes, not taking a risk of locking it up or or getting a flat spot at this early early stage. There's still a lot of pit stops to go. Since 1963, the car that was second on the grid went on to win in only 12 percent of the cases. Has the pole sitter won the worst position? Only once since 1963 has the third place starter won the race. So unlucky to Peugeot number nine, Sebastian Bourdais, the local Le Mans resident, starts that car from third place. He may change history, he may not. Yeah, but what, what we are going to see, Mark, is a titanic battle. This may be, we may be on the edge of the greatest Le Mans ever. No, Vascarolo, so. One day they make a film about this and no one would believe it. <laughs> <laughs> Won't be Hollywood either. So talking of Hollywood, there, there is a film being made. Very early, I think. Well, the leader has completed nine laps and yeah. is on lap ten. But traditionally, and again, bearing in mind Frank Beeler, things keeping you, oh, things safe. Early. Right. And I hope they're all watching that uh, that Belgian run car at the moment. So a lot going on here at the track. So this is uh, that Pat Long we're looking at. Is that no, that's the, the 81 car, I think. The 81, not not the 81 lizard. Yeah, the blue lizard. One's orange, the other's blue, but they're both of them carrying those flags of the drivers who've...